All right, so I want to talk a little bit more about the news regarding Red Hat going free. Uh, in my previous video, I talked about the fact that Red Hat going free is a good thing for anyone trying to learn about Red Hat, and I still stand by that. However, I dove a little bit deeper into why this is happening and what is going to happen to the people who still run CentOS, because of course, in the eyes of the people who are still running CentOS, this is terrible news because, you know, CentOS is going to disappear. Especially since they have moved the end of support date over to the end of 2021, which is quite stressful to the many system administrators who are still supporting live environments on CentOS. For people running CentOS on their home computers, however, I'm sure that CentOS Stream will remain a good alternative. But we will dive a little bit deeper into the why and what will happen in the future. First of all, let's talk about IBM. They bought Red Hat in 2018, I believe it was in, in October or something. Uh, and so they are in control of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and also CentOS. Now there's a lot of changes going on at IBM right now. At the end of last year, they had a new CEO called Arvind Krishna. After their previous CEO, Gini Rometty, stepped down as CEO, IBM wasn't doing so well the last couple of years, so let's hope that Arvind will do a better job than his predecessor. But let's talk about that a little bit, because IBM is struggling financially. I believe they have to cut down some expenses where they can, and of course, where would they cut expenses first? Right, where they are not making any money even though lots of CentOS servers are potential Red Hat subscription candidates, it's still a huge cost to maintain CentOS builds. Also, in a more recent article on ARS Technica, a board member of CentOS spoke out about how Red Hat wanted to no longer do the support for CentOS because they believe a community works better without corporate intervention. And even though I agree, I think this is just a nice way of saying that they do no longer want to support the maintenance of the project. Now, to be fair, I don't blame IBM for doing this. After all, besides the financial savings, this is a golden opportunity for IBM to convert all of those free CentOS versions into paid Red Hat subscriptions. And after all, Red Hat is still a corporation. They want to make money. Now, that being said, you are not obligated to run Red Hat if you're looking for an alternative to CentOS. In the enterprise space, there's Oracle Linux and Amazon, for example, that are both based on Red Hat. We can already see that Oracle is trying to lure some people in by posting on their website that Oracle Linux is binary compatible with Red Hat. In the community space, Amazon is already sponsoring a new project called Rocky Linux, and Rocky Linux is going to be the revival of CentOS we were looking for. This project aims at creating a downstream build of Red Hat. This is the same thing that CentOS was, and downstream builds are basically releases that are released after the upstream releases are released. So in this case, the upstream release is Red Hat. So you can consider Rocky Linux to be a one-to-one -one copy of Red Hat, but without the corporation behind it and without all of the branding. So it will be a 100% free and open source alternative to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So in the end, CentOS didn't really die. If anything, it's just a good thing that we are now going to have a Red Hat copy that is not bound to any corporation and that is fully controlled by the community. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe and leave a comment down below. What do you think of this whole scenario of Red Hat and CentOS? I'd like to know more. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye-bye.